All right, I have a starter board hooked to a battery. I push the button and nothing happens. So Zach, what are we going to do first? Check source. Okay, so we're going to check source voltage at the battery. I'm going to activate the circuit, so I'm going to push the button. Always activate the circuit. I still have source voltage. Am I good? Yes. Yes. So now what am I going to do? Come over and check these. So, nope, check source at the starter. So positive and negative at the starter. So up here. There and there. And notice on the studs again, we're going to activate the circuit and you'll see that we still have source voltage. So we have what we need at the starter. Okay? So, what does it take to make the starter work, Zach? Close the switch. So, is the switch open? Do we have an open in the switch? And if I activate the circuit, it should come back to what? Zero. Zero volts, and I have 12.5, so I have open circuit across that switch, which we suspected because the starter's not working. So, now what does it take to make that switch come closed? These two grounds. It, well, a positive that, uh, ground there, because that comes from yeah. the ground here, which comes from the ground down there. So, so ground there. Here. And positive here. So you're going to go positive to negative, and you're going to look for available, right? Do we have what it takes to close the circuit? I push the button, and we have zero. So, if I have zero there, I don't have what I need, right? Mm -hmm. So, which side are you going to voltage drop check? The uh, positive. Positive, so go positive on this side, that's negative, positive on this side, back to my positive battery cable, so I'm going positive to positive. We know this is positive over here, and I activate the circuit, and I have voltage, so I have an open, okay? Hello. Now, what am I going to do to prove it? Where's my open? Well, this wire comes on down. To this contact so I need to make contact close here right so activate the circuit check for the contact close and we have 12.5 volts do we have open circuit across there yeah so what does it take to make that contact close a positive here and a negative back here to this terminal so we're gonna look for available now right so we're looking for available we should have what source voltage yeah, right 12. So I push the button, I have zero. Which side do you want a voltage drop to see what's missing? The negative. Okay, so you're gonna voltage drop the negative, so stay on the negative. So you got your meter there, okay. and then come over here to the negative. I'm gonna activate the circuit, and I see zero volts, is that good? Negative. That's good, because that means that it's not open circuit, right? Right, okay. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Go off the other side. So you're gonna voltage drop the positive. So you're going to go positive over here to positive. We're going to activate the circuit. Right now it shows open. We're going to activate the circuit. It still shows open. Okay? So now what are you going to do? You want to follow that wire down and do a halfway on it? Yeah. Follow it on down to here and go from there to there. I'm going to activate the circuit and I have an open in that wire from lead to lead. So from here to here I have an open. Do you want to see if you can get closer? You want to test an end? Yeah, okay. Come on over here and test a I'm um, testing end. So he's going to, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to test terminal to wire and see if we can get the same open circuit. Terminal to wire. So we just stabbed into the wire. And I'm going to activate the circuit and I have 12.5 volts. So that tells me I have an open between my leads. Between my leads is the terminal. I have a bad crimp. And that's a simple solving a voltage drop problem. Now, what I wanted to point out in addition to that is this wire right here, it's hard to tell, but this is a piece of air brake hose. You can see that it bends just like air brake. This is air brake hose, and I put this on here so that students can look at this wire and say, oh, I found the problem. But what they don't know is I put a piece of phone line from the lug through the center of the wire all the way down to here on this lug. And that phone line, while it won't carry any current, it will allow me to see voltage through it so I can diagnose this problem. The reason I point that out is because I hear people say all the time, well, I can just use my ohm meter and check this, this cable and see if it's good. Well, that's great. Check this ohm with an ohm meter and it'll show that it's perfectly good. But as soon as I fix this problem right here and put the starter load 
on this cable, we all know that phone wire is going to go up in smoke, which proves that your ohm meter is worthless. You must pass current through cables and look at voltage drops from end to end in order to see if they're useful. So don't get caught up in the ohm meter tests. Those are worthless. Don't do it.